guys, I'm here. It's time for us to paint some pandas. We are doing week six of our summer reading program, Tales and Tales, and this week it is Asian animals. So if you got to watch story time yesterday on Facebook Live, you saw the stories about all the an Asian animals, the pandas, the peacocks, the tigers, the elephants, what am I missing? Panda, peacock, tiger, elephant. Oh my goodness, camel. There's one more I'm missing. We had the pangolin. What else did we have? I didn't have any stories on pangolins. I'll figure it out before we're done. Well, today, we didn't have story hour out at Rally Point yesterday because it was raining. Bad weather cancels, stories out there. It's too wet, we weren't doing it. So I did do my Facebook Live story time. This morning at 10 o'clock, we were at Rally Point doing our stories and our songs and things of Asia. So now this afternoon, it's time to do our craft. And I have not made this yet. We are going to do the fork painted panda. Try to get a little closer. So if you picked up your grab and go kit, you have the stuff in your kit that you need. You have the instructions. And stapled to the instructions is the panda face that you can cut out and glue onto your panda after we've painted with the fork. So, your bag looks like this. I was gone last week on my vacation, so Sierra put all these bags together. She found the activities, she put everything in the bag. Really cute, she did a great job. So make sure you thank Sierra for getting this all put together for us. In the bag along with your instructions. There is a container of paint. There's some white paint in a little container and there's a plastic fork. We're not painting with a paintbrush. We're painting with the fork. So let me show you the bag. I'll pull it out. Just like I said, inside is the fork, the container of paint. There we go. Whoops. That paint container went upside down. I don't think I want an upside down paint container. I think I want it right side up. Not that I think the paint will pour out of there, but just in case. I see she gave me a red sheet, but I see there are green sheets in other bags. So you might have a green sheet, sheet of paper to paint your panda on, which is great because pandas like to eat bamboo, and I think bamboo is green. Then you have the one I showed you the fork painting panda, the instructions. So the instructions and the panda face. If you're picking up a grab and go bag, because you haven't gotten one from story time yet, then there's all these activities. She found some great puzzles and activities about camels. There's a coloring page with a camel. There are, oh, there's a coloring page for an elephant. Reminds me of Elmer the elephant. And then the puzzle page about elephants. And then there was a matching game. What all? What else besides elephant starts with the letter E? And then there's a tiger game sheet. And there, I think this one is so cool. It's a panda, matching the panda to the shadow. Fun, fun, fun. And then she also, what that, I should have told me what animal, I forgot. She also did the peacock. There's a peacock sight word um, project. So it looks like, there's a sheet with all the words on it. It looks like it's the fanned out tail. And then you have all these great peacock feathers with the words, you're gonna match them, glue your peacock on. Fun little game, because we had peacocks. Let's see if it's in here. Camel, elephant, tiger, panda. I still think I'm missing one, but I don't know what it is. Anyway. I will put this all back in the bag. So this bag is ready to go. If you wanna come pick one up. Oh. Anyway, it's ready to go. There we go. Our Asia animals, the painted fork, fork painted panda. So let me read my instructions. This comes from www.craftymorning.com. I found it on, on the internet, thought this looks like so much fun to do. So you need a fork, you need white paint, you need paper, and you need scissors and glue. 
It says, start by dipping the fork into the white paint and pulling away from the middle, making a round shape. Cut out ears, a nose, a mouth, and pupils to glue on. Let dry, and you have the cutest panda bear around. So, I like to make sure I'm not making a mess on the table, so I have this old, this is from, what month? February 2014, this big dust calendar page. I've obviously used it before for painting. I like to put something on the table to cover my area so I can catch my paint, so I don't have to scrub up my table. Now I need my red paper, okay? I need my white paint. I'm gonna open up the lid so I can get to my white paint. I need my fork and the instructions say, start by dipping the fork into white paint and pulling away from the middle, making a round shape. So I'm gonna dip my fork in there. So I have paint on my fork. I'm going to go down on my paper. I'm gonna put it right in the middle and pull it out. Oh, oh, well. There's my first dab. Let's go in here again. I think I need to get more paint up on my tines. I'm gonna put some more paint on there. Put it in the middle, pull it out. Oh, well, maybe that's not it. There's my second go around. I have a lot of paint on my fork. Can I get it to come up? Oh. When I set it down on my paper, I get this big blob. And if I pull it out, I'm starting to make the fur. This is going to be a, a try and see how it works kind of thing. Looks to me like I'm getting a lot of paint on my paper when I lay it down. And then I just need to come in with my tines and pull it out. Oh, maybe I can do more than just one. Hmm, this will be kind of fun to play around with. So I'm gonna put some more paint right here. I'm gonna set my fork down with the paint. Ooh, I got a big blob of paint. Now, if I pull my paint, I can go in all directions, pulling it out of the middle. Just keep using the tines on my fork to pull Pull, pull, pull. Okay. I'm just gonna start setting it down, pulling it out. Oh, now I think I'm figuring it out. Because I can start to pull the paint that was pooled in the middle, I can start pulling it out. Let's go up here, I haven't gone up here yet. What if I push it out, does that work? Well, I can push too. I'm getting more of a line up there. So it's just paint. Instead of using the paintbrush, just use the fork. May the fork be with you. Are we making a uh, Star Wars panda? There we go. Pulling it out. I don't know if you can see, I'm getting a lot of white like whiskery things towards the outside edge. I got a lot of paint on the inside, but I'm getting some white whiskeries. Just gonna pull with the paint I have on there and see what I get. Cause I still feel like I have a lot of paint on there. And we'll just pull. Looks like if I wanna set down some paint, looks like I can put some over here on this side. I haven't got much over here yet, so I'm gonna set my fork down, get some paint on there, pull it out. This is kind of fun to use a fork to paint with. I'm liking it better now as I get more of them on there. I can just move that paint around, get it on my fork, let's put up there, pull it out. Just drag my fork across the page. Ooh. Let's put another one up here. 
just pull that paint out. And it's kind of looking like some fur in there. The tines of my fork are making it look furry. I need some more paint up here. So let's put it there, pull. And then you just keep doing that. You just keep dipping it in the paint, putting the paint down on your paper. Use the fork to pull it out until you get a size that you think you like. You could fill up the whole paper if you wanted to make a little panda. Oops. You can have just a little panda. Just look at your paper and see where do I think I need more paint. Whoops, I put a drop there. Let's just pull it out. It's okay. Now there's going to be a lot of paint. So it is going to take this a while to dry. You might have to set it aside for the afternoon, let it dry. Because that paint is still thick on there. You can keep pulling it out with the tines and making it not quite so thick. But there's still a lot of paint on there. Okay, I want to start making my face a little bit fuller, so I'm going to come down here, put some paint. So I'm going to start pulling it out fuller. Push it up, pull it out. Just drag my fork through there. Okay. Like I want to put some more over here, drag it out. Oh, I can still drag some of the paint from there. Ah! See, I have to have put some paint down here. Oh, I've already put a mark over there. Drag it, pull it out, pull that paint out. What an interesting painting tool to use, a plastic fork. Who would have thought? Some paint there, pull it out. Okay. Ooh, I can. Ooh, look at that. If I don't get quite as much, and I just put it on here and do that way, that works. Ooh, play around with your fork. Let's see what you can get. Almost out of paint here in my cup. I think your cups have a little bit more paint than mine did, which is great. If I just do that, just set it down. If I just set it down, look, I'm getting long without even having to pull it. Just getting the paint on there in long strands. Some more paint on the back of there. Put it here. Oops. Put it here. Put it here. Put it here. Oh, how much fun! How much fun to paint with a fork. And now my panda space is getting fuller the way I wanted it. Might as well use up all my paint, so I'm just gonna go. Like that. Oh, Panda, how we doing? I wanna make sure I keep you in kind of a round shape, because I don't want you to look like you're a square Panda head. You know what? I think I like it. I think I like my panda head. You went all the way to the side of the paper. It's still kind of a round shape. I gotta put some more in there. Oops, that one dropped. Oh. 
Okay. There we go. There's my panda's head. Can you see? It is kind of a round, fuzzy head. Look at it. It's a good thing I had my paper down because look at the back of my paper. I have spots on the back. So cover up your table, cover up your work surface. Use some old newspapers if you have them. If you have a tablecloth, you can cover it up with that you can later wash the tablecloth. Okay, I'm not changing any paint colors, so I really don't need to, but I'm gonna put my brush in the water. There's just a little bit of paint left in there. I don't want it to get all over my table, so I'm gonna cover my, put my lid back on and cover it up. And now, this is very, very, very wet. It will need to dry. You could, if you have a hair dryer, you could get your hair dryer out and try to hold it and, and blow it dry. The only thing with the hair dryer, if you have some wet, gloppy paint on there, it could make it move around. And it depends on if you don't mind looking at it like that, you can try it. Otherwise, I would set this aside. It's gonna take at least an hour to dry, but that's okay, because while it's drying, you can get your panda face and start cutting these pieces off. So when this is dry, you can glue your panda face onto your panda head. So it says, cut each piece of Mr. Panda's face out along the dotted lines. After the white paint has dried, you can glue on these pieces to complete your panda. So I'm cutting on my dotted lines. Got one ear. I'm gonna cut over here to get my second ear. Pandas have two ears, they also have two eyes, and you notice they have black circles around their eyes. I'm just gonna rough cut around this for right now so I'm not holding my whole paper. And now I'm gonna cut out my nose. Can you tell what shape this nose is? Do you see what shape the nose is? Let me cut it out and see. The nose goes right down to the little panda's mouth. And he's this happy panda, so he's smiling. He's got his smiley face on. Okay, put that out of my way. Are we still stuck somewhere? Can you see what shape is that panda's nose? Yes, it's a heart. The panda's nose is a heart, so I'm gonna keep cutting around my lines. Cut it out. Cut it out all, around, all the way around the second part of his nose. Whoops, I almost cut part of his nose off. Okay, the nose is ready to be glued on. I'm gonna quick cut around my eyes because I just did the rough cut. I only cut around it. So now I can cut on my dotted lines to cut out my panda's eye. Oops, there's one eye, there's the second eye. You know what shape the eye is? Is it a square? Nope. Is it a circle? Kind of. It's kind of a circle, kind of an elongated circle. It's kind of an oval. It's got kind of an oval shape to it. Two eyeballs. Now my ears, I have like half, they're not quite circles, but you could make a big circle and cut it in half. He does have rounded ears. He doesn't have triangular ears like a cat. He has rounded ears. Okay. My pieces are cut out and ready to go. Now while you're waiting for your panda to get dry, don't lose the pieces. And since mine is still wet, but I wanna show you how it works, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on. I would suggest you wait till yours dries. Actually, I'm gonna see if the wet paint, if it will stick to the wet paint. I'm gonna put on my nose. Does my nose go at the top, the middle, the bottom? It looks on my page here. 
The nose is more towards the bottom. The mouth and the nose. So I'm going to put this. Ooh. On my wet paint. And I'm going to get paint all over my fingers. <laughs> there. There's my nose. Truly, I would wait till it dries before I did this if I was at home. <laughs> it's going to stick to my paint right now. I wonder if it'll glue it to it. I guess if you want to try it, you can. Now I need my two eyeballs. So I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put one here. <laughs> this is kind of fun to put it on here with the wet paint. Maybe you can try it. It'll be up to you. If you want to play around with the wet paint, I'm just curious to see, will it stick on there once the paint is dry? Is the paint going to act like a glue? Now I just need my ears. I think I am going to put glue on my ears because my paint in the middle there is pretty thick. But it's not as thick on the outside. So I am going to put on one ear right there. I'm going to put glue on the back of my second ear. Got my glue all over the back of it. I'm going to put the second ear right up here. And ta-da! I have just made a fork painted panda. Truly, it'll be fun to see. Will they stay on there? Well, since I stuck them on with my wet paint, will that act as a glue? Or would it be better to wait till it is dry and then glue those on? Maybe you want to experiment with me too. I love it. I think this is a great panda. And how easy was it? He's so cute. You don't have to be an artist. Look at the panda. I hope you enjoy making your panda. Thank you for joining me today for our Asian animal craft. Next week, is our week seven. It'll be our last week of Tales and Tales summer reading program. Next week we're doing Antarctic animals, animals from Antarctica. So we'll have to find out what kind of fun craft will we get to make for next week. Have a great day, stay cool in the heat, and I'll see you later. Bye.